Hey everybody, welcome and thank you so much for tuning in to the Wayward Outreach Sermon. We really believe this sermon is going to bless you, so stick around and watch. Today I want to give you a word that God gave me. and I, these, these services are very prophetic. What I mean by that is we have to hear from God. This is not just a Bible study. This is a word from God. And if you're in this room, God has a word for you. And this is a word that God has for you and he has for this church. And this is the title of the message. Nothing can stop this. Say with me. Nothing can stop this. Why, why, are, why is God telling us that nothing can stop this? Because when God has a call on your life, there's no devil that can stop it. There's no obstacle that can stop it. There's no person that can stop it. Nothing can stop this. Joseph, when God gave him a dream that one day he would be a world leader, his brothers came against him, betrayed him, and sold him off to be a slave. They sold him off. They wrote him off. They told their, fa their, their father, he's dead. He's done. Animals ate him. Sold him off as a slave. But they didn't realize nothing can stop this. He became a slave, he did. And while he was a slave for years, his brothers forgotten. The, while he was a slave... Potiphar's wife rose up, and that was the wife, the master's wife rose up, and she wanted to sleep with him. Temptation was trying to stop it. And Joseph said, no, I would not dishonor God, and I would not dishonor my master. Then she cried out, rape, rape, a false accusation of rape. He gets put in prison. But there's, a, there's an issue, and there's a big but in this story. Nothing can stop this. Not a false accusation, not betrayal, not lies, nothing. No devil in hell, no obstacle, no mountain that's in your way. Nothing can stop this. You got to get this in your spirit right now because there's some things that are in front of you right now that want to convince you that you're not going to get through, the dream's not going to happen. But for, remember this, it wasn't your dream. Now, if it was your dream, it can't be stopped. But when it's a God dream and it's a God vision, there's nothing that can stop this. God had a plan for my life. I wasn't born in a perfect home. I was born with a father that was abusive. My biological father was abusive. When my mom was pregnant with me, he, she would punch her in the stomach trying to abort me, put guns to her head, beat her up, trying to get rid of the baby. But God had a plan. Nothing can stop this. At six years old, my father got in a gunfight, got killed on the streets. He had a plan for my life, and it wasn't his plan. My dad's plan was not, was not to, for me to be a man of God, not for me to fulfill God's purpose, for me to love God, to live for God. His plan was for me to be like him, and that would be a womanizer, and that would be an abuser, and that would be an alcoholic. My dad dies. And maybe the devil had a plan, but God had a plan. And because God had a plan, nothing can stop this. And, and now, you know, even when I, I as, we, as we started doing ministry, as a young man, I started doing ministry, I get married. We finally have a baby. Our first baby comes down with cancer. People start telling, Pastor Marco, why you? And then I answered, why not me? But the truth is, nothing is going to stop this. No matter what's coming against you, get this. If God has a plan for your life, stop focusing on what the 
news is saying. Stop focusing on what the devil is saying. Stop focusing, come on, what your, your friends are saying. And let's start focusing on what God has already said. Nothing can stop this. You know, I recently, one of the most devastating things that ever happened in my life, my mama just passed away last month. Now, that's a big deal to me because she was my mentor. She was my teacher. But I know this. Right now, she's in heaven. Last night, I had a dream. I saw her, and I'm in that dream looking at her, and I see the back of her. She turns around in this dream. I see her smiling. But I, I said, was that your mom? No, I just, it was a dream. But that's all it was. It was a dream. But, but I want you to get this. She's smiling. I could feel, I, could, I, could, I know this. The message that she put in my heart said, Marco, don't you stop. This is not a time, come on, this is not a time to stay in mourning. This is a time to move forward and fulfill the plan of God in your life. Nothing, even loss, cannot stop this. So God took me to a story in the Bible. And it's in Mark 4, 35. And I'm going to give you some reasons why Nothing can stop this. In Mark 4, 35, it says this, on the King, New King James Version, it says, on the same day, same day as what? Jesus was preaching for hours upon hours. On that same day, when evening had come, he preached all day until evening. He said, Jesus said to them, let us cross over to the other side. See, nothing can stop this because it's a God idea. When God speaks, He speaks in commands and promises. He speaks in commands and promises. When He said, let's go to the other side, to me, that's good news. Why is it good news? There is another side. There's another side to the sickness and that's healing. There's another side to the bondage, and that's freedom. There's another side to barely getting by, and it's the release of God's abundance. There's another side to your weakness, and it's God's strength. There's another side to your depression, and it's a joy-filled life. There's another side to your worry, and that's peace. There's another side to your hopelessness. It's, come on, it's a clear vision from God. There's another side to your hunger, and that's satisfaction. There's another side to your apathy, and that's passion. There's another side to your doubt, and that's confidence. There's another side to your defeat, and that's a victory. There's another side to your lack, and that's provision. There's another side of death, and that's resurrection. There's another side of your condemnation, and that's salvation and eternal life. There's another side of renting, and that's owning. Come on. There is another side to unforgiveness and bitterness, and that's forgiveness. There's another side to your sinful life. It's God's grace and mercy. There's another side to your biggest trial. This is the other side, your biggest and greatest ministry. There's another side of your greatest test, and that's your greatest testimony. There's another side of your greatest failure, and it's your greatest success. Thank God there's another side. We are here excited about the other side. We're not going to get stuck on this side of life. There's another side. Let's go. Let's get in the boat. Let's cross over. Let's cross over now. And I'm going to be in the boat with you. This can't be stopped. It's a God idea. See the good news? A God idea can't fail. In Luke 1, 37, it says this, for no word from God will ever fail. You know what we're struggling with? You haven't got a word from God for so long. You're just so used to trying to get a word from your Facebook trying to get a word from the next preacher that's in line that you're following as a groupie. We got some Christian groupies. And that's why God's giving you the Holy Spirit. 
Only a pastor or a prophet can only confirm what God's already told you in the Spirit. But when you get a word from God, it changes everything because your word will fail, a fake prophet's word will fail, but God's word will not fail. God's word will always fulfill what he sent it out to do. When he said we're going to the other side, this is what it means. We are going to the other side. We're getting there one way or the other. And the reason we're getting there, I said it, I commanded it, I promised it, we're going to the other side. There's another side to this ministry. It's worldwide ministry. We're going to start planting churches in inner cities across the United States of America. We will be one of the biggest churches in the whole United States of America. Why is this going to happen? Because God has called us to disciple people all over the world. And I'm going to tell you this, we are going to the other side. It's going to happen. See, the good news also is others are going to cross with us. So they got on the boat. But look in Mark chapter 4, verse 36. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. You know what God is saying? I'm not just taking you to the other side. There's going to be your, your family's going to the other side. Your neighborhood's going to the other side. Your friends are going to the other side. They're going to follow your lead. He says, I'm taking you, but I'm also taking them. They're going to be caught up. In, come on. They're going to be caught up in your current. Well, God is saying, I'm not just doing it for you. It's time to get in this boat. I'm going to do it for you, and I'm going to do it for a whole bunch of people that are associated with you. People are going to want to be associated with you because through you, it's going to be breakthrough. Through you, they're going to get to the other side because you're believing and standing on a promise of God. We're going. I remember when we first started this church, I'm going to freak you out a little bit. One of our first services at the 4th and Arrowhead campus, we do an altar call for someone to get saved. There was a young man, his 20s, he comes up. I pray for him, and when I pray for him, he falls down to the ground. And I felt God tell me, go down there and pray for him. Don't just leave him on the ground, go pray for him. I was like, go pray for him. I didn't push him or nothing, he just fell. <laughs> I didn't like it. It was nothing like that. He fell. I'm like, okay. And, and you say, uh, see, what, what is that? What it is is sometimes there's a clash of kingdoms. It's the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of darkness, and the kingdom of darkness falls. <laughs> Happens a lot. Happens a lot. When they, when, they tried to get, when they tried to arrest Jesus, all the men fell. The kingdom of darkness came to the kingdom of light. They all fell, and then he goes, get back up. I want to let you know something. I, you're not taking me. I am going willfully. So I went down and I prayed for that young man. And when I prayed for that young man, he all of a sudden opened up his eyes. He opened up his eyes and looked at me in perfect English, and he goes this, I hate you. I don't even know the guy. He goes, I hate you. And this is what the demon said. Because of you, I'm losing so many souls. That's what he said. And then, and then the young man, the demon through him said this, and I'm going to kill your family. Okay. Okay, that was, that was the word he the devil gave. <laughs> but thank God we got a word that's greater. And I told him, like, first of all, first of all, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And greater is he that's in me than he is in the world. So that was nice, but that ain't going to happen. I cancel, I rebuke that word in the name of Jesus. I got authority here. And in the name of Jesus, come out. And that young man, that young man, that demon came out screaming. <laughs> And the young man was set free. Then I said, Holy Spirit, fill him. Fill him with your power. He got baptized with the Holy Spirit. After he got baptized with the Holy Spirit, within seconds, he starts prophesying over this church. I just met him. He started prophesying. 
He started talking about where the church was going, how, how souls we were going to save, that we were going to reach the world. After he was done, he got, he got he was demon possessed. He got filled with the Holy Spirit. He became a prophet in two seconds. And after he was done, I go, wow, what, a, what, what an amazing moment. And then I, I bring him back, I bring him to, and I, I talk to him, and the guy doesn't know English. He only knows Spanish. Si, si, que, va, que, no, si. And everything he spoke to me was in English. I want you to get this. There's a real power that will try to do everything. I'm not trying to freak you out. I'm trying to wake you up that there's a real power that's coming against the word that God has given you. But no devil in hell can stop this. Stop being scared. Stop running. Stop being worried. If God has given you a word, stand on that word and say it. Because God said nothing can stop this. I didn't get this word from a fortune cookie. I didn't get this word from a fortune teller. I didn't get this word from a latest magazine. I got this word from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And when God speaks, He speaks and commands and promises, it will come to pass. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And nothing's going to stop it. You know why it's important for you to know that? Stop focusing on people that are trying to stop you. You're wasting your time. Because it doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter if they back out of you. It doesn't matter, come on, if they betray you. It doesn't matter because they don't have the control of your destiny. It was controlled by God. We serve a sovereign God. And if God said it, they can't stop it either. See, nothing can stop this. Not only because it's a God idea. Nothing can stop this because Jesus is in the boat with us. In Mark 4.37 it says this, And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into that boat, so that it was already filling. Just because you got a word from God does not mean that you will not get some spiritual resistance. Every word that you get from God will be tested by a real devil to try to stop you from going to the other side. So wind rose. They said, Why did, 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 was it just an all of a sudden storm? It wasn't just an all of a sudden storm. It was a demonic storm that was causing a spiritual realm trying to stop Jesus from going to the other side. Because on the other side, there was towns, cities that were controlled by demonic powers, and they had those cities on lockdown, and they were saying, we can't, ha we can't let them get to the other side. But there was a problem. Jesus was in the boat. You can't sink a boat with Jesus in it. Since Jesus is in the boat, you are getting to the other side. I want you to get this. The one that created the heavens and the earth is in the boat with you. The one that created the ocean is in the boat with you. The one that created the wind is in the boat with you. The one that even created the demons is in the boat with you. The boat cannot be sunk. It will get to the other side because Jesus is in it. I'm going to get to the other side. Look, it says, the bowl was filling. But, but, I love that but right there. It's filling. They're going through a real great storm. All true. But, there, come on, there's a spoiler alert, devil. But, I might have fell. But, I might have made a mistake. But, Come on, I, I'm a sinner. But, come on. I, I, 
but I, I didn't come from the right family. But, but, I didn't come, I, it doesn't look like it's going to work out. But there's a mountain in front of me. But there's a giant in front of me. But you could throw me in the fiery furnace. But you could throw me in the lion's den. But there could be a Red Sea in front of me. But God is in the stern of the boat with you. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. You know what Jesus is saying? I'm not tripping. You know why I'm not tripping? Because I already spoke. And when I said, let there be light, there was light. When I say something, my word does not return void. I don't need, come on, I don't, I don't need a motorboat. I don't need you to row heavier. All I need is for God to speak. Come on, I don't need more money. I just need a word from God, and that word will get me to the other side. Stop worrying. It's time to take a nap or rest. Jesus is resting. See, our strength, our help, our victory, and salvation is in the boat with us. Everything I need is in my boat. If you have Jesus in your life, you already have everything you need. Stop negotiating with the devil. Come on, single ladies. Stop letting a guy tell you you need him to pay your bills. You need him. If you just give out a little bit, I'll pay your bills. You let that, you let that devil know, I don't need you, and I don't need any other guy because I got God, and everything I need is in the boat with me. Come on, it's in the boat. Salvation's in the boat. Healing is in the boat. Purpose is in the boat. Peace is in the boat. Isaiah 41.10 said, do not fear anything. I'm looking at some devils, and not you guys, but, but look but at some spiritual, you're not the devils. I'm looking at some devils in the eye right now. And I'm giving them the scripture. I don't fear anything. I don't fear anything. Pastor, don't talk like that because you're going you're to bring a demonic onslaught. I don't fear anything. The devil's underneath my, come on, he's underneath my feet already. I already got a word and there's no demonic force that can stop this. Fear anything. What if all the money doesn't come in? I don't fear anything. Because God already gave me a word. It's going to happen. What if it fails? It's not going to fail. I got a word from God. It's going to happen. Do not fear anything, for I am in the boat with you. Do not, be, see, it says, do not be afraid, for I am your God. And I will strengthen you. Be assured, I will help you. I will certainly take a hold of you with my righteous right hand, a hand of justice, a hand of power, a hand of victory, a hand of salvation. What God is saying, I got you. You're in the middle of the storm, but you will get to the other side. Nothing can stop this because nothing can stop me. You got to get this in your spirit. And just because you're going through a great storm doesn't mean God's not with you. You got to get this in your spirit. Because there's, a, there, there's almost a preaching out there to make you think once you come to Christ, everything gets fixed. Like, no, 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 no. Once you come to Christ, you just entered a battle, a war and get ready to fight this fight of faith. Come on, get ready to fight this fight of faith. Get ready to go through some storms, but God is saying, this is important for you to know, you're gonna get to the other side, you're in a storm, it doesn't mean I'm not with you. It looks, see, I'm asleep. 
He, he's asleep. He don't care. He goes, no, I already gave you a word. Why don't you just believe what I told you? You're worrying. You're wringing your hands. You're full of fear. You're full of doubt. You're getting angry. You're getting frustrated. You're tripping on people. And God is saying, stop doing all of that stuff. I'm in the boat with you. I'm asleep. It's good. You're going to get to the other side. This storm is not greater than me. In Romans 8, 35, it says this. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer, no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity? Or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us. And I am convinced, and I am convinced, and I am convinced, and I am convinced, I am convinced, I am sold, I believe it, that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. God is in the boat with me. Nothing can stop this. Don't you trip. It's going to happen. We're going to have churches all over the world. It's going to happen. We're going to invade places of darkness where the devil had cities on lockdown. And we're coming to the other side of the nation, the other side of the city. And we're going to establish houses of God. They're going to bring salvation, bring deliverance. We are going to the other side. Come on. We are going to the other side. And I want to say one more thing. Nothing can stop this because we can pray. So they're all in the storm. In the storm. I want you to think about this. The wind does not wake Jesus. Water's filling the boat. He's in the stern of the boat. He's in the back of the boat where the rudder's at. I like that he's in the back of the boat where the rudder's at. You know what that means? I'm in the place that could begin to direct your life. And I'm right here. But the wind doesn't wake him up. The waves going in the boat and the water filling, the boat filling doesn't wake him up. The only thing that wakes him up is the disciples' prayer. The power is already there. And God is waiting for someone to cry out to him and say, I'm in a storm. I am struggling. But we serve a God. I want you to get this. He doesn't need a lot of faith. He just needs a little faith. These guys had little or no faith, but they had enough faith to pray. God will take a weak prayer and do great things. Stop tripping on your ability. It's not your ability. It's not by mind nor by power. It's by His Spirit. It's just time to stop freaking out and start opening your mouth. I don't have anything, but I do have a little prayer. And if you have a little prayer, you can move a mountain. If you have a little prayer, you can tap into the power. If you have a little prayer, then the storm can cease. See, God can answer a prayer that has never been made. He says, you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. That's why you don't have it. And after prayer comes results. The boat's sinking. The waves are coming. It's a fierce storm. They're being overpowered. Jesus is in the boat. And they finally wake him up. Jesus, don't you care we're ready to perish. And in Mark 4, 39, then Jesus arose. Oh. Excuse me. Can't you see I was resting? I was sleeping. I had a hard day's work. 
I was preaching all that. I'm human. I need some sleep. But don't you care? We're ready to perish. We're ready to drown. The boat's ready to sink. He goes, okay. For them he did this. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. After prayer comes results. There's a then. But before there was a then, there was someone waking up Jesus in desperation. I'm going through hurt. I'm going through pain. I feel like I'm not going to make it. And Jesus says, that's all I need to begin to move on your life. Is there anybody here that's going to make a decision? I'm going to stop worrying. I'm going to stop fighting. And I'm going to start praying. See, nothing can stop this. Because God is greater than any storm that's coming against you, any weaknesses you might have. Jesus, at the end of the story, tells them, why don't you guys have any faith? He rebuked them like, why, why? didn't you hear what I said? I said we're crossing over. I didn't say we're going to try to cross over and let's see if we get there. I said we're crossing over and nothing can stop this because I am the Word and when I speak, it happens. It, come on, if I give you a Word, you can write it down, put it in the bank, it's going to be cast, it will come to pass. I already told you where we're headed. It was a promise, it was a command. We are getting there. Why don't you have any faith? And you know what's so great? God is greater. And you know what? He's greater than even your personal weaknesses. He's greater than your lack of faith. He's greater than your fears. He's greater than your experience. He's greater. Even the disciples look like. If this was a message about the disciples, it would be a message kind of like this. You need to have more faith. And I get that. We need to have more faith. But the answer isn't in their faith. Their answer is in Jesus Christ. God will give you the faith that you need in the battle that you're in. He's going to get all the honor. He's going to get all the glory. You will get to the other side. But it will not be because you were self-made. It wasn't because you're so smart and you got so much wisdom and you got so much power. It's not by might nor by power. It's by my spirit. You will get to the other side because I am greater than anything that's coming against you. And I'm greater than even your personal weaknesses. Nothing can stop this. Give God some praise. Nothing can stop this. Nothing can stop this. Nothing can stop this. Let's all stand up. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's message. Now join me for a word of prayer. God, thank you so much for today's word. We pray that it would touch our heart and we will learn how to apply it this week. Continue to go with us this week and encourage us, strengthen us, and help us to walk with you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much again. And, and if you'd like to partner with us by supporting the ministry, simply click the link in the bio or the description. Thanks again, and we'll see you.